If I don't do motivational stuff. If you can get motivated, that's a problem. I'll tell you the solution. You do the business, you get results, you'll be so motivated, you can sleep at night. Like when people tell me, <laughs> you know, to go find a building, and I need to be motivated. No, you need to go do it, get the result once, and you won't sleep at night. Your feet will go like this. You'll be like in the morning, like, okay, what do I do now? Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's like a little hype motivation. Then you have even no idea of your potential. You have no idea what's out there. You are crawling your way, and it's working against you. But I'm telling you, here is the way out. And you're like, I don't know if I can pass through that. Okay, no problem. Sleep on it. One day you will wake up, hope I'm still around. So I'm going to tell you my first deal. I'm going to tell you my first deal and then the second deal, how I made a lot of money. So I had left the billionaire in the end of 1988. I told you when I sat down with him and I said, look, I think I can make it on my own. And he said, Sharif, it took you eight years and it was a very good moment. And then I left. When I left him, we were sitting in Wisconsin at that, that time. And I left him and I came to Southern California. I came to Los Angeles and it was in the valley. And uh, what happened is... Um, when I was leaving, he called Hilton Hotels and he said, I'm going to give you a gift. Sharif Medawar has been my right-hand man for eight years. Now, uh, Hilton Hotels, the corporate office, knew it won't be sorry because we had bought resorts and sold and I told you we were doing crazy stuff. And he said, I'm going to give you a gift. Sharif Medawar wants to leave me. He wants to work with you. So if you have any projects where you need somebody who understands the real estate and the hotel business, you have a gem of a guy. And Besari was a very demanding guy, very well known that he's just top-notch. So immediately, Hilton called me and said, could you come and open the Del Mar Hilton in Del Mar, California? You know Del Mar? You know where Del Mar is? So here I go in, and Hilton gives me free accommodation. I can stay free for the hotel, and I can actually manage the hotel to open it. And, um, and then I have a, a big bonus. So the salary was not so high, very little, but a big bonus once we open and get the results that I could get them. And then after that, I can go to another property, etc. So when I arrived, I'm saying, I learned so much, I have so much knowledge, and all I have was credit cards. I didn't have cash, because I, I worked on benefits with him, just I wanted to learn. So I was sitting in my office one day, early in the morning, and I look in the penny saver, and I see this property, for sale, duplex, Solana Beach, are you with me? 576, 78, Loma Santa Fe, uh, must sell, call, Nicole. I'm like, okay, so I called. The lady answered very enthusiastically, hi, this is Nicole. Hey, Nicole, my name is Sharif Medawar. I'm the manager at the Delmar Hilton. She goes, great, I don't know where that is. We had just opened. It's okay, no problem. And I, I said, I would like to ask you, how much do you want for the duplex? She said, I'm not going to talk numbers right now, but I really would like you to come in if you want to see it, if you're serious and you're a manager of a hotel and you have a good career. Yes, yes. Come at 7 p.m. Don't come to the front of the duplex. Come from the back area, knock on the back door. It's easier and I'll open it for you. I'd love to show it to you. I said, okay, great. See you at 7 p.m. I hung up. And all of a sudden, my heart started beating very fast. Like, how come I'm scared? I've done millions of dollars for the billionaire, but it wasn't my own money. Now it's my money. I mean, how much is this duplex going to be? Probably it's worth 350 to 380, maybe 360. You understand? But I've done millions of dollars for the, 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 the billionaire. I've, I put these under contract for 10 million, 100 million, 50 million, flip the money here. I used to do trading the stock market, buy back and roll out, and that's so complicated stuff, eight years. But now with my own money, 300, 350,000, I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like going to have a heart attack. Even lunchtime, I can't even eat in the cafeteria. I'm just walking around as a general manager like a zombie. They ask me a question, ask me tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. I, don't, I, can't, I can't think right now. There's a, there's a meeting, let's do it tomorrow. Finally, 6 o'clock, I get into my car, I'm like way earlier. And I start writing what I'm going to tell her. I said, if I pay you cash and close quickly, how much of a discount will you give me? If I pay you cash and close quickly, how much of a discount will you give me? I kept practicing. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm so worried. I'm so scared. And I go over, 7 p.m., I get out of my car. I read it one more time. If I pay you cash, close quickly, how much of a discount will you give me? I got out of the car, go to the back, knock on the door. Took two steps back and I smiled. There's a Chinese proverb that says, a man with a smile is welcome in any home. I always remember that. Took two steps back and I smiled. She opened the door. Very pretty girl. Tall. She says, hi, Sharif, how are you? And I blanked out. What's her name? What's going on here? She goes, come in, come in, let me show you. 
I walk in. She goes, look, look, I changed this living room. Look at the kitchen, how nice it is. I lived here for a while. I owned this duplex for a while. By the way, next door is rented. Should rent for, 10, for about 1000 1050 but I rented to $900 because I know the people. They're very nice. Let me show you the upstairs. We go up, up, and we're going. And I'm like, what am I supposed to ask her? How much of a discount if I pay you? If it's breakfast, what, what's going on in my head? And I go up. She says, this is a bedroom connected to this. Look at this, these. There are two sinks over here. Said, and then she turned around and said, you're, you're so quiet. Are you interested? I said, yes, yes, this is very nice. I'm sorry. Um, let me ask you, how much do you want for this? I'm thinking, if she says 350, I got myself a steal because it's 1450 each side. It's a good size, great location. Solana Beach is like the beach is right down the street. Amazing. And I said, how much is it? She said, 315. And you know, you know how in English 15 and 50 almost sound the same? So I wanted to make sure I heard that right. I said, 315. And she said, okay, okay, maybe 300 if you're serious. So I flinched by mistake. I have been flinching since. Believe me, it changed my life. Because she dropped $15,000 in one spot. She goes, look, look, 300 if you're serious, if you can close fast. I said, oh, that's great. L let me get my paperwork from the car. Let me ask you, why are you selling? I'm just curious to know. And she said, oh, I'm going to Europe. I got this job promotion. It's amazing. And if I don't have to pay commission, everybody wins. She knew it was a good deal, but didn't know, like, OK, what am I going to do with it? And I said, OK, great. Let me get the contract from my car. And by the way, I said to her, you know, as a US citizen working offshore outside the US, you're going to go to Europe, the first 70,000 is tax free. She said, I didn't know that. By the way, I, I was always an expert in taxes, because that's like I learned from Besari. First, you make the money, learn how to save taxes, then protect your ass. Those are like the formula. So I was an expert then. And I said, well, I worked for a very wealthy guy, and this is what you do to do. Oh, my God. Today, you can save a lot more even when you work outside the country. So I go to my car, get the contract, and we write. And I said, good, I'll let you know right away. And I left. I was so excited. Next day, I went to Home Fed Bank, which was right next to, it was right on, uh, if you know the area, is um, Calle del Valle. If, if you know the Solana Beach, Del Mar area. And I remember to look important for the bank. I took a briefcase that was empty. And I'm walking in with the briefcase. I go in and I say, hi, do you have somebody for the loan? And, and they say, yes, Kelly over here. I'll never forget Kelly, my first loan officer. Kelly stands up. How are you? Sharif Melawar. She said, do you have an account with us? Oh, yes, I have an account right here. Now, mind you, in the account, I have pennies. I mean, I literally have like 1,500. Didn't have a lot of money. And I sat down. And I said, look, I have a contract to buy a duplex literally less than half a mile away in, on, Sol uh, on uh, Loma Santa Fe Drive. And she looked and she said, uh, OK, Sharif, so that duplex is $300,000. I said, yes, it's a very nice duplex. And she said, um, since it's an income producing property, you need to put 20% down payment. 20% down payment is how much, guys? You're going to have to come up with $60,000. I said, $60,000? That's a lot of money. I don't have $60,000. She said, um, well, let me ask you this. I said, what? Do you actually intend to live on one side and then keep the other one rented? Do you intend to rent one and live side? I said, no, I just wanted to go in. I know I checked with the city planning this morning if I could do some things with it. And she said, don't listen to me. Listen to me. Do you intend... You maybe will. You might change your mind later. I mean, there's a possibility if you, oh. I said, yes, yes, I may, I may. She says, because if you will, we can drop it to 10% because be like a primary residence now. And you don't have to put 20%. You can put 10%. I said, great. And uh, I can get the loan? She said, yes, we have Nina. Nina? Who is Nina? I'm single. I am a manager here. I, I know what I'm doing. No, Nina, is a Nina loan. No income, no asset verification loan. I said, oh, a Nina loan. She said, yes, we don't even care how you get the down payment. I said, this is wonderful. I said, great. She said, can you show me how much you make? Here's my last pay stub and all this. And she goes, what is this? This is not enough money to qualify for the loan. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, you need more income to qualify. I said, but look at my bonus. Look how much bonus I can get. I am an expert. I worked for a billionaire for eight years. I made him millions. I came in, Hilton corporate office chose me to come in. She said, all this is fine. All this is fantasy. I can't use bonuses. I need to see the income. 
and your salary is a very base salary because the, in, the bonus is big, can't do that. So as I'm like, okay. And she said, I don't even know if we can do 10%. I said, oh, that's too bad. And she said, but you work at the Hilton? I said, yes. She said, you know what? We have a special program even. What's the special program? She said, in, in this zip code for Del Mar and Solana Beach, if we have somebody buying a place that could be considered their primary residence, we have even a, a program for 5% down. I tell you, you could have put $15,000 down, but the problem is now you have to have a $285,000 loan, and you don't qualify for that. I said, well, I'm thinking, what question should I ask her? And as I'm grabbing my stuff, I said, but you're sure there is no other way? And she said, no, give me your bank account number. I give her the bank account number, and she says, you only have 1500 in the bank account. I'm like, shh, everybody in line is looking at us now. I'm an embarrassment. I'm a good client here. I'm going to be very long time with you. Is there anything, as I grab my briefcase now getting too embarrassed, is there any program or anything special I can do here? And because, I mean, how much more do I have to make? And she said, like 8500 more a year, and you can qualify for that loan. But you don't have it because that's your base salary. And I turned around and said, but it's a duplex. Right next door is rented. She goes, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you're right. How much is next door? I was going to say 900, but it came out 1,000. 1,000 a month, because I knew I can increase them to 1,000. Are you with me? I said, no. She goes, Sharif, sit down, sit down. The property helped you qualify. Listen to the words that changed my life. The property helped you qualify. God bless America. The property helped you qualify. You understand why we're into multi-units? You understand why I can bring a single tenant building and put a big tenant and their corporate guarantee will help you qualify? The properties help. There is so much you can do with your own knowledge and your own power, but once you network with other people and you create syndications, you create, get big properties, you have even no idea of your potential. You have no idea what's out there. You are crawling your way and it's working against you, but I'm telling you, here is the way out. And you're like, I don't know if I can pass through that. Okay, no problem. Sleep on it. One day you will wake up, hope I'm still around. But this is what happened. I'm sitting right in front of her. The property helped you qualify. I said, great. The 15,000, where should it come from? She said, we don't care. I said, can I, they, they don't verify? She said, it's a no income, no asset verification loan. All I want to see is 15,000 in escrow. You're opening escrow? I said, yes. Where do I go? Go here, there. Okay, fine, I'll go do it. Where, where do you think I got the $15,000? Can anybody guess? Thank you. I went to my credit card, cash advances. At the time, there was no PayPal. So I did cash advance. I went over and said, give me $5,000 on this, $2,500 on that, $7,000 on this. I got my $15,000, made a cashier check. I remember I went to Union Bank right in Del Mar, next to a restaurant called Il Fornaio, which is still there. God knows how many years later. I got my... My cashier check, went to escrow, put the 15000 and got the loan. And you know what I did? I got it. I put it under contract. And what I did is I had gone to the city planning and zoning department, and I knew that I could separate each unit into a separate townhouse. So instead of one deed duplex, I created a separation, and I could sell them each by themselves because I could see what sold in the Del Mar, Solana Beach area, and anything 1,450 to 1,500 square foot that were condos were selling at like 250. So these, because they were adjacent to each other, I was able to sell, and I netted, after I paid off everything, the 300, I, and I paid 8,000 to separate the utilities and all this, I netted $156,000 cash in my bank account after I flipped the unit in less than four months later. 156,000 cash from selling two separate units instead of one duplex. Are you with me, yes or no? Yes. I remember having 156,000 in my bank account. I was 28 years old. I thought I was so important. I was walking, skipping. <laughs> do you know who I am? Do you know what I do? <laughs> what I did, I was single at the time. I did what I bought is a 750 BMW IL. You know the 750 IL? Fastest car ever made by the assembly line of BMW. In San Diego County, there was only two people with that 750 IL from the B dealer. Anthony Robbins and yours truly. And I knew Tony Robbins because he used to hold events at the Delmar Hilton. So I knew him, I knew his brother, very nice individual. Truly a very unique guy. Like him a lot. 
But he does motivational stuff. I don't do motivational stuff. If you can get motivated, that's a problem. I'll tell you the solution. You do the business, you get results, you'll be so motivated, you can sleep at night. Like when people tell me, you know, to go find a building, and I need to be motivated. No, you need to go do it, get the result once, and you won't sleep at night. Your feet will go like this. You'll be like in the morning, like, okay, what do I do now? Other ways it doesn't work. It's like a little hype, motivation, then it will... So, I got the property, sold it, made money. What, do I, what I, did I start to think of? How can I do it on a bigger scale? Are you with me? So, again, there was no internet at the time. So I started looking in the penny saver. Lo and behold, I find this 172 unit apartment building in Mira Mesa, California. I called the seller, went to meet him in person, one of the nicest people. Every now and then, life and God gives you a break. The guy was very nice. He said, look, I've owned the building for a while. I'm retiring, we can work it out. What do you need? I said, look, I have money in the bank account. I'd like to put um, a deposit. Give me 45 days, I'll do some inspections. Is it, is it okay with you if I talk to some tenants? He said, yes, that will be fine. I will notify them. A lot of them know that I'm going to be selling. Okay, great, everybody's happy. And I started thinking, I'm going to take that, that 172 units, and what will I do? What did I do here? Condominiumized the property. What did I do? That means I separated the units with separate deeds so I can sell them. I figured if I can do this on 172 units, can you imagine the money I will make? But I don't have enough down payment to qualify for a loan because the loans at that time, although they were aggressive as Nina loans, this was for residential. Commercial was not so easy. Are you with me? I said no. Now commercial is easier. If I had to do my life over again, I would be a billionaire because now I can search online, make offers, and get loans so easy. And now I know syndication. If I had to redo my life, I would have started with syndication. But listen to this. So I go and I go over to the first unit that he told me to go talk to the people, knocked on the door. I could hear the baby crying in the back. The gentleman opens the door. I said, hi, how are you? I think the owner had mentioned to you I'm a potential buyer of the apartment building. I wanted to meet you in person. The guy said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, we just had a baby in the back. I said, oh, congratulations. The wife says, hello. I said, by the way, I understand here from the list of tenants that you're actually paying 1050 and he said, yes. I said, would you like to become an owner here? He said, I would love to become an owner, but how much is it going to cost me? I said, well, it's going to cost you actually about $12.50 a month, because this is what your payment will be based on the interest rate. He said, twelve fifty. I don't know if I want to pay an extra two hundred. dollars We just had the baby. No, but listen. Here are the actual write-offs you're going to have. This, so you're paying extra for property tax and insurance and all this, but these are the write-offs. You write the interest off here. You write this off. You write this off. He said, I like it. So my net is actually $50 less. I said, yes. He said, I'm very interested. I said, do you have any other friends in the building that would be interested? Talk to Jenny over there. Let me go knock on her door. Boom, boom. Next thing, I started talking to people. I said, there is potential here to actually get some tenants to buy the actual units. So I'm going to go to the city planning, and I'm going to see what's going to happen. I go to the city planning and zoning department on Front Street in San Diego. Take a number, and I wait. And the guy is chewing gum. There is nobody else. There are some people waiting, busy, but there's nobody else for this guy, who's the city planning for the... Finally, he ushers me forward. Hi, how are you, sir? Sir, I smile. I'm very nice. He's totally... This yes, yes, how may I help you? Sir, I have this property under contract. I'd like to know if it's allowed to make it a separate condos. He looks, he shoves it back to me. No. I said, sir, don't you have to check if it's approved? Or no, no, we don't need condos. We don't need condos. These are, this is an apartment building. I'm not going to approve condominiumizing it. Sir, is there any way, I don't want to tell him I need to talk to your supervisor because that's an insult. And you don't want to fight City Hall. So here I'm all excited, I want to make some big money, and this guy is blowing my dreams off, and he's got a bubble glum in his face. These are the moments like when you see in the movies, like they get fantasized, like boom! But then you hold yourself back, you come to the real scene. And you're like, can you please take a look again? No, no, we're not going to do that. I said, is there a specific reason? There is no need. There is no need. So who creates the need? Sir, sir, I have other people waiting. <laughs> There's nobody else for this guy. There are other people. Without... I said, okay, thank you very much. I go home and I'm thinking, okay, this is a problem. But remember what I told you? You can avoid a problem. I can't avoid that problem. The guy's in my face. I can solve the problem. I can't solve the problem. He doesn't want it. How can I transform it into an opportunity? I go to sleep at night and I'm like, how can I make this the best thing that ever happened to me? Have you ever went to sleep and woke up with a crazy idea? Creative idea? I said, oh my gosh, I got it. I go the next day. And I knock on the door of the same guy with the baby that was crying. He opens. Hi, how are you? 
He said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, look, I need to present to the city that we have tenants that are interested to become homeowner. I have a petition here. Would you be so kind if I put your name and I put your phone number and all this? Can you sign right here? He said, yes, absolutely. He signed. Can I go to Jenny? Yeah, yeah, call, go to Jenny. So the apartment building was 172 units. I only got 21 signature after spending my entire day there waiting for people in the parking lot, having them showing that the other tenants. So, so I had like all these extra pages. Nobody signed anything. But the first page of the clipboard, everybody signed. Are you with me? I said, no. Yeah. I went to the city planning and, and zoning department. That was the day after. I arrive early in the morning, and I see the guy sitting. He looked like he's chewing the same gum because it looked tougher. <laughs> Just like my dog. Are you with me so far? And believe it or not, as God is my witness, he's telling the colleague of his, she's sitting next to him, he's telling her how he woke up at 6 in the morning, and he's been watching the movie Gone with the Wind. And then I see this, and Clark Gable did that, and, and I'm standing there. I'm like, God, please give me patience, please. I mean, there must be something wrong with this guy. Finally, he says, yes, sir. And I come over, I said, by the way, do you remember me? He said, yeah, I think you came in a couple days ago. Yes, remember that apartment building in Mira Mesa? Yes, 172 units, yes. Well, I'm going to show up in the city planning meeting that's going to be held in a couple days. It's on Thursday. And I'd like you to know that um, I'll bring Channel 4 because I have talked to them that a lot of the tenants will show up with their kids, with the babies, and you as a city planning office don't want people to become owners. So we're going to make a big show out of this. I just wanted to make sure you understand that I have the petition signed. He says, no. the guy's like, no, 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 sit down. I think there's a misunderstanding. Please have a seat. Can I have the clipboard? No, sir, I cannot give you the... Okay, okay, one more moment. Let me talk to my supervisor. Oh, you have a supervisor? Let me talk to your supervisor. He goes over. Supervisor comes over concerned. There's a little wooden door. Would you come to my office, please? Would you come to my... No, certainly. Hi. It's so nice. you right? Very nice. I go in. And he goes, look. We don't have a problem with that. We can give you what's called conditional this and approve it. And we can give you a letter right now that's going to be approved. We don't want Channel 4. We don't want this uh, negative uh, propaganda against the city. The city welcomes home ownership. We are here in Southern California. Welcome people to become homeowners. Please don't bring that problem. Can I hear? Can I have a confirmation from you right now? This is not going to happen in the city hall. And in the, Sir, you have my word. Just give me the letter. Okay, can you give me till tomorrow morning? No, no, no. I'm going to sit here. This is early morning. It's 9 o'clock right now. I'm going to sit here, take your time, write the letter. Well, it may take an hour. I have nothing else to do, sir. I'll just sit here because I have to get back to all, all these people who signed. Look, I'm not showing them the second page, third page. Look. And he goes, okay, give me a moment. He goes, come back. He is pending this approval and this approval. I got the letter and I left. I couldn't afford to buy the building because I couldn't get the loan, but I advertise it as pre-approved by the city for condominiumizing the building. When I sold it, I made over $950,000. I became a millionaire as I was turning 30. Was that nice? Yes. Creating condos, taking a property to its highest and best use. Remember I told you in Puerto Rico, I took the building, separated, sold the top unit? Remember that? Sold the top unit and changed the cost basis? Yes. There's a lot of stuff I learned through the years that I make somebody's life a lot easier, a lot shorter, a lot faster. I know quite a few of you coming to Puerto Rico. I'm very excited. I'm very excited that we're going to have a long-term relationship. But I want you to understand, what I share with you in a few statements and a fun story is something I had experienced that was very stressful to find the answer, then I come and present it. So take it. You're getting the juice of the juice. You don't have to go plant, create a tree, and wait for the orange. I'm giving you the juice.